Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Chantal Hyde Show. So exciting, so much fun to be here. I see there are already people in the room. As usual, I need to know, guys, opening up the chat right now. How are you? How is your night going? Did you have a fantastic weekend? I super hope it was awesome. I know mine was, even though I would have to think hard to remember what happened this weekend. Guys, let me tell you, when you start meditating, it changes the concept of time. It is unbelievable. People ask me what I did the day before, and, and I really have to think hard. I don't know because I'm so in the moment. And as it is, if I want to know what I'm doing tomorrow, I don't remember it. I have to go into my calendar and go, okay, this is what I need to be ready for tomorrow. Unless it's just kind of like picking up my brain and I'm getting prepared in advance. But it's just, it's crazy what meditation does to your brain. It so puts you in the moment, but that is a good, good thing. Because when you think about it, this very moment has so much that you can be grateful for. Uh, so let me know, Caroline, hello. How's the sound? How's the image? Uh, you know, do that little check for me. Let me know how that's working out. Um, and I'm going to open up this slide presentation because I want to get right into this as usual. Don't like to keep you guys waiting. You are here for a topic and I want to deliver. It is time. Um, so let's see, just going back and forth between the slide and the chat. Carolyn, let me know what the sound is like. How's the sound? How's the image? How... Uh, I'm good. Perfect. Perfect. Good to know. Uh, so I'm going to start at the slide presentation. So tonight we are talking about overcoming your last relationship. Um, you know, it's such a huge topic, especially in our culture today, where so many people are bouncing in and out of relationships, trying to find that right one. And there's so many feelings that we're taking from one relationship to the next. And I know some of you want to make sure that you're not vomiting your past into your future. You want to make sure that you're not bringing baggage and, and, you know, we, we tend to accumulate baggage, don't we? Like we'll take some pain from one relationship. We'll bring it into the next one. We'll dump that in, vomit that into the relationship, cause some more pain, feel some more pain. And next thing you know, you're adding more into your baggage and taking that into your next relationship too. So tonight's topic is about ending that particular cycle, building yourself up before you get into the next relationship so that you're not transferring pain over and over and just snowballing that effect, just growing it without doing anything to stop the cycle of growth of pain because all we end up doing when we do that is hurting each other and then now we have other people that are going out and having this cycle of pain that's going on so i really want to help give you some tools to get you through that but i'm going to start off with the shout out because tonight i'm coming to you live from harmony wellness collective this is an amazing place i am part of this it is in Kitchener. It's right across from the Via Rail train station so that anybody coming from anywhere is going to find us. Just walk across the street. Here we are. And what the collective approach is, is people come to us for healing and we look at them body, mind, and soul. So we look at their physicality, what needs to be, what needs to be addressed in that. We look at their mind what needs to be addressed in what is happening in the brain. And we look at the spirit, we look at the essence, we look at the energy, what needs to be addressed in the energy. And we have all these practitioners that deal with all these different aspects. And it's such a unique approach because people come to us and they go through an intake process, they answer a bunch of questions, and then we have a group meeting and we discuss client B and you know, everybody has a conversation about what they feel they can contribute. And then the person who, who is basically in charge of the intake will then sort of dissect the whole process, assign certain people to go through certain levels with client B, and we walk them through healing. It is so, 
so cool. And, and just the collection, like we have everything from naturopaths to doulas to me dating and relationships. Uh, we have people who like tap into your energy and clear those blocks. It is super interesting. So just so you know, that's where I am tonight. Um, now, for those of you who don't know, here's the quick run through. Author of eight books, I walk you through the process of getting through a breakup. So you saw the cover of Comeback Queen when I did that intro earlier on. Uh, getting through a breakup, understanding the types that are wrong for you, vetting process, making sure you're choosing the right partner. And then once you have that right partner, that's only half the battle, I want you to stick. I want you to stay. I want you to work it out. So after that, you're going to get into after the first kiss, which is how to make your first year ridiculously awesome. And you're going to learn how to not turn little things into big fights. And then of course, the baggage that we bring that I mentioned earlier, those do cause discord in relationships. So fix that shit is going to walk you through that. And then I address your soul, you know, say yes to goodness. Cause I love, I love when people are happy. Listen, guys, I say this over and over again. I believe in karma. I believe that what I create in you comes back to me. So this infection that we do with each other is absolutely beautiful and uplifting. And this is how we change the world one person at a time. My website, oh my God, <clears throat> I was looking through my statistics the other day. I have almost a quarter of a million hits on my website. I have people from 140 countries that have come to my website and answered questions for themselves. This makes me so proud of the work that I do. This motivates me. This is my, this is my fuel, you guys. It's, it's you. It's you coming to me, getting help, feeling better. Uh, <clears throat> up to over 3,200 downloads on iTunes. Guys, I'm getting over 100 downloads a week right now. It is beautiful. Uh, dozens of mainstream news mentions, thousands of books sold, hundreds of women helped, that I know of, and some men too. I got some man fans out there, which is really cool. Now, what are you going to learn tonight? Common feelings that lead to negative tendencies when you go through a breakup, coming out of a breakup. What are the, what are the feelings that we tend to go through the most? Because when you define it, you can really start working on it. So I kind of want to bring these notions to the forefront so that you can see it, analyze it, and then feel better about it. What are the common loops after breakups? What do we tend to just kind of cycle through over and over again? unconsciously without really thinking about it and what are tools that you can use to get through that cycle because I want you to stop the cycle of pain and get into feeling better and of course you guys you know I love my memes so hopefully you're enjoying this one you know what hurts more than a breakup losing your hair I can't think of anything that would feel worse in a breakup except for one day waking up and being completely bald so breakups are pretty devastating, you know, and, and for some people it can, it can really take you down. And again, this is all about healing. This is all about lifting up. This is about making sure that you are fortified so that you go into your next relationship from a better place. Because again, this infection that I talk about, you will infect your partner with the energy that you bring in. So let's raise that energy up so that you can raise them so that they can raise you. And oh, it's a beautiful upward cycle and I love it. So three common feelings that we feel after a breakup, hurt, rejection, misunderstood. You might feel one more than the other. So I want to do a little quickie poll. And I want to know how you felt. What was, what was the feeling that you had the most after a breakup? What would you say was the one that was at the forefront of, of your emotions that maybe it was a word that you kept saying over and over again. Was it, was it more hurt? Was it more rejection? Was it more misunderstanding? What was it that you felt that you were going through the most? And then these feelings tend to bleed into other feelings. So anger is usually a byproduct of hurt. So if you notice people that are angrily going from one relationship to the next. They're vomiting anger from one relationship to the next. The, the seed of that emotion, of that anger, really is hurt. 
And when you think about how hurt evolves, we have a fundamental understanding of the difference between right and wrong. And when we feel like somebody is disrespecting what we fundamentally know, first, there's a little voice that says, that's not fair. And then that voice gets louder. That's not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. And it turns into anger. And, and people are unconsciously taking that hurt and, and they exteriorize it in the form of anger. And they lash out at other people because they don't know how to heal the hurt that's inside of them. So if you see people who are very angry, a lot of fighting inside a relationship, go back in their history, ask them what happened when they were children, ask them about their relationship history, ask them about who hurt them the most. And usually you'll find the nugget of where that anger sprung from. Now rejection, a way that, that, that will manifest in a negative behavior is I'm going to reject you before you reject me. And you see this a lot in, in sometimes like serial daters. So people who, who only date for short periods of time and then they find fault. Oh, he texts too much. He doesn't text enough. Um, you know, oh, he's, He's too generous. He gives me too much. He's too flowery. He's always beside me. He's too attentive. Oh, he's not attentive enough, right? So there's always a reason to let that person go. And usually that's somebody that is fearing rejection. And so they're rejecting somebody else before, you know, before that fear of rejection can actually take place, before that rejection can happen. Um, and then the people who feel misunderstood, they tend to to over explain. They're always trying to get people to understand why their last relationship failed. And usually there's a lot of, there's a lot of avoidance going on so that they're not taking any responsibility for their own behaviors, for their own part. Listen, in every single fight I've had with my husband, I can find my nugget of truth in there. But some people don't want to do that. It's true that it takes a lot of courage to look at yourself and find your own faults. And, and some people are afraid of doing that. And so they spend a lot of time assigning blame to other people and wanting other people to understand why it wasn't their fault for the relationship to end. So <clears throat> there's some things that we do sometimes that hold us back when it comes to getting into the next relationship and really making it work. And one of those is, is, you know, listen, we do tend to repeat patterns. We seek what's familiar, even if it's wrong for us. And because of those patterns, we will fall into the same sort of relationship over and over and over again. And sometimes people tell themselves, and I see people do this all the time, men, are dicks. Men are assholes. All men are dumb, that kind of thing. And so they're lumping everybody based on their own experiences. And so there's just a rejection of the general population just because the people they've come in contact with have been people that they've been hurt by. And another thing that people will do is be too fearful to get into the next relationship. You know the saying, once burned, twice shy. And so they, they were so hurt in their last relationship that when that relationship ended and they had all of this hurt that they're carrying around, well, now they're just afraid to step into the next relationship. And so they just want to stay home. They don't want to go online to go see, or maybe they will go online and, and look at what's out there. And, and I'll be honest, online is scary because there are a lot of posers. There are a lot of fakes. There are a lot of people who are living in mom's basement and maybe not being honest about, or maybe it does look like they're still living in mom's basement. And I've had women who say, you know what, when, when I'm, you know, looking at someone's pictures, I'm looking at the background to see how messy it is. So there's a lot of judgment going on, um, you know, and, and there's just a, a big unwillingness to step outside of the box, to step back into the dating realm because there's a fear that the next relationship is going to hurt as much as this last one did. And there are the people also who are so afraid of being alone 
that they might have a breakup today and be online tomorrow and have coffee with somebody the day after because they're quickly looking for that next person. They're not taking any time to heal. They're not taking any time to regroup. They're not taking any time to redefine to make sure that the next relationship is going to be different from the last one that they were in. They're simply rushing into the next one because the space beside them needs to be filled, desperately needs to be filled. And so this can cause problems too, because again, you're just gonna keep repeating a pattern because you're not taking any time to lift yourself up, elevate yourself to the next level, redefine based on your past experience, what is gonna be better about your next relationship. And so it's always flatlining. It's always the same thing across the board. So that's a danger too. So Caroline says, fear, this is me, trying to make an effort after 13 years to get out of the box. Caroline, you are in the right place. You are in the right place because I'm all about stepping outside of the box and teaching you the tools that are gonna get you beyond the box. And, and outside of your comfort zone is something much better than you've ever experienced. Uh, tell me this, Caroline, are you meditating? I'm curious about that, so let me know about that. So a negative loop that you know, tends to cycle is, is fear and lumping. And so because we're lumping, we're too afraid. So we go back to fear and then we lump and then we go back to fear or we're rushing and then it's like, oh, everybody's the same. And so then we're lumping and then it's back to rushing and then lumping. So it's just this endless loop that just continues on and on. If you're not doing any changes, if, you know, when I do my coaching, I say, listen, when you work with me, I'm going to make you do different things because in order to get different results, you have to do things you haven't done before. So I'm going to be tapping into the things that you have not done before and getting you to do those things. Now, here we're going to get into the tool section. What can you do to make sure you are having a different experience the next time around? Very key is shrinking your amygdala calming your fight or flight, reducing your stress, fear, and anxiety so that you can start removing yourself from that negative cycle, getting out of the loop. Because fear freezes you. Fear keeps you from moving beyond, right? Like think about what happens when somebody startles you. I mean, look what I just did. I, just, I tensed up, right? And that's what fear does. It stops you short. It tenses you right up. And, and it takes a moment before you can take a step again. Caroline says she started meditating two weeks ago. Good stuff, Caroline. Um, put in the comments for, for other people who are gonna be watching this, what your favorite meditation is. I love sharing favorite meditations because you know obviously I have my Let's Meditate playlist and I'm gonna pop that up for you right now. If you go to YouTube, you type my name into the search engine you will find my YouTube channel. I have a playlist called Let's Meditate. I have designed this for you. This is, I, I mention this in every single book I write because I want everybody to come here and start calming their minds. Um, and, and so, and we have Rich Pendlebury who is incredible. He makes these meditation tracks just for us. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, I probably did, but he's actually gonna maybe be making the soundtrack to my videos that are coming up, which is super cool and special. Um, so go to my YouTube channel, find my Let's Meditate playlist, grab a pair of headphones, go sit in a comfortable spot, close your eyes, plug the headphones in. Listen, guys, I know you feel it might be hard to meditate. Um, Oh, Deanna says she's doing the chakra meditation. Yes, good stuff. I love Rich Pendlebury just made us a new chakra meditation and it is my go-to right now. It is absolutely soul soothing. It makes me feel fantastic every time I do it. And sometimes I'll just play it on a loop, just keep it playing and I'll just be doing other stuff. Um, so here's the thing. Do not think that meditation is hard because that is your first block to meditation. If you think you have to have a super quiet brain for a whole 10 minutes, I'm here to tell you that is unrealistic and I don't expect that of you. All I want you to do is find that comfy spot, put the headphones on, plug in the music, press 
play. And every time you realize you're off in thought, just bring your focus back to the space right in front of your face. That is all you need to do every single time you realize that your focus has gone off because every time you bring it back, you are adjusting your brain chemistry. You are changing the structure inside of your brain. You are shrinking your amygdala. If you shrink it by a tiny bit every time you bring it back and you bring it back 50 times during 10 minutes, if you bring it back five times during 10 minutes, that's five changes each adding on top of each other during that 10 minutes. Then you do it again tomorrow, you're adding another five to the five that's already there. Now you're up to 10. It is compounding as long as you continue to do it. If you make this a habit, you make this as important as eating and sleeping, it will absolutely change your life. I did a podcast yesterday, I was talking about meditation. I said, look, if you're happy being unhappy, don't meditate because it will make you happier. Uh, Caroline says, I've been using the Rich Pendlebury. Guys, I love this. You are using Rich Pendlebury as a verb. I have had people reach out to me saying I had a panic attack and I did this and I did a Rich Pendlebury. <laughs> it is so freaking cute. And I love, love, love this. He's going to be making us a sleepy time one, by the way. So another tool that you can use to help overcome the pain that you go through when you go through a breakup, when you were, you know, sort of past the, like the actual breakup and now you're between relationships, but you're still feeling the pain from your last relationship is reforming your negative dialogue. Now, y'all know I'm a word nerd. And of course, I had to look up the word reform because I just loved it. It buzzed so well inside my brain. Look at this definition, the improvement or amendment of what is wrong, corrupt, or unsatisfactory. To change to a better state, form, improve by alteration, substitu substitution, abolition, to cause a person to abandon wrong or evil ways of life or conduct, to put an end to abuses and disorders. Now here's the thing, relationships with the wrong people take us down and negative words will form inside our brain, sometimes because of what they said, sometimes because of what we're saying to ourselves. And this needs to change before you get into the next relationship. So that negative dialogue, I want you to become aware of it. I want you to start listening to the words that are coming out of your mouth. I want you to start listening to the words that are happening inside your brain. And if they are negative, if they are self deprecating, I want you to stop, catch yourself and ask yourself, what is the opposite of what I just thought? What is the opposite of what I just said to myself? What is the opposite of what I just said out loud to a friend or a family member? Those words are not correct. If they are words that are taking you down, you need to reverse them because the person you want to be with is somebody who wants to uplift you. It is somebody who wants to put you on a pedestal because what they want to do is lift you higher and see you soar. And you taking yourself down will exhaust them because every time you step off the pedestal, they have to try and hoist you back up. And what I wanna tell you right now is I want you to understand that in order to let somebody hoist you up, you need to start doing the job yourself. So start hearing what's going on inside your mind, start hearing what's happening outside of your lips and start reversing that and start believing a new reality of yourself. And this is gonna lead into the next exercise for you, elevating your self-esteem. Now, this is an, a journaling exercise. What you are going to do is you're gonna sit down with a piece of paper and you're gonna write, 
I am statements that are positive. 50 I am statements that are purely positive. Nothing negative whatsoever. Carolyn says, when I have a rough day at school, I will take a five minute break, do a little Rich Pendlebury, and then I'm good to go with a clear head. This makes me so happy. It is so true. It is so calming. It is absolutely vital to putting your mind in the right space. I am so glad he makes these tracks for us. They are the most beautiful tracks I've been able to find. Now, I'm not saying you have to do Rich Pendlebury's only. I encourage you to follow your intuition. If you feel compelled to go try something else, you know, the Rich Pendlebury tracks, they're, they're not guided. And so if you feel like you're getting way too distracted, you're not calming down, I do recommend that you go find a guided meditation that will help you play around. If what you're listening to isn't working for you, go find something else. Find something that will. I spent hours and hours and hours before Rich started making tracks for me. It took me so long. Like all the tracks that are not Rich Pendlebury's are the product of me searching through YouTube, finding tracks that I felt worked. And, and a lot of them, I was doing them myself first and then plugging them in there. And some of them are from other people who have gone off into YouTube, found other tracks, and then said, I'm using this. And I said, you know what? Tell me what it is because I want to add it to the playlist. So do play, do find what's going to work for you. Now, coming back to this, I am awesome. Listen, guys, when I say 50, I mean 5 0. I want you to sit there and write 5 0 I am statements. Now, you may find that you get to a certain point, maybe 15, maybe 25, maybe 30, maybe 40, 45, and then you're stuck. So wherever it is, like you start thinking for yourself, right? Think, what is it that I know about myself? What are qualities that I know about myself that are true, that feel true? What is it about me that was not recognized in my past relationship that I want my next partner to understand about me? I am compassionate. I am kind. I am generous. I'm a good mother. I'm a good friend. I light up a room. Maybe you don't start off saying I light up a room, but when you get stuck, I want you to ask yourself, what have other people said to me about me that is positive? Did somebody say you lit up a room? Then it goes on that list. I light up a room. You don't have to believe it, but somebody else did. Therefore, it belongs on that list. You will come to believe it. And that is the point of writing these 50 I am statements and sourcing information from other people. And if you run out of memories of what other people have said, then by all means, go to a friend, go to a family member, go to somebody who loves you and cares about you and say, what is it about me that is positive? and write down what they say. Now, all of these 50 statements have to be different, so don't repeat anything. So if somebody says something you already wrote, that's not going to count. It has to be a different statement. And I want you to get to 50 because let me tell you, my friends, when you get to 50, you will come to the conclusion that you are awesome. Now, this elevates you, the meditation, the reforming the thoughts that are happening inside of your mind, sitting down, doing this exercise, and coming to the conclusion that you deserve goodness because you embody goodness will help you level up into your next relationship. Now, again, the meditation doesn't stop. The self-dialogue, the switching, that doesn't stop until, right? So, and, and even then, I mean, like I'm years, and, and, and you guys know, I don't ask you to do anything that I haven't done myself. And so it's not like I don't ever have negative self-talk that I need to turn around. I still have those moments, but I'm much better at it. So, you know, there are certain parts of this where you just will continue to do, like the meditation, like the reversal of the self-talk. When it comes to this 
self-esteem exercise, the I am exercise. When you're done writing it, I want you to put it up on your fridge. I want you to put it somewhere where you're going to see it often because I want that list to infect you. I want it to, to infuse you with its energy and you don't need to stop at 50 when you are out and about and meeting new people and having new experiences. And they say, you know, I just, I feel so good around you. Damn it. That goes on the list. It goes on the list. People feel good around me. So don't stop at 50. If you're getting more, absolutely add that to the list. Elevate yourself so that you become prepared to be elevated in your next relationship so that you don't have anything to be afraid of because that next partner is going to be amazing. So guys, the book that I recommend that you read that has more information about this, and, and I get such great feedback when it comes to the book, Comeback Queen. This is the book that I wrote for people who are going through breakups. And, and really, like I wrote, you know, make a triumphant return to dating after divorce. But the fact is, a divorce is a breakup with a piece of paper. It's, it, you know, that's basically what it is. You don't have to be married to be able to relate to this book because it's all about breakups and healing through breakups. Answer the whys. If you find that your mind is spinning, why did this happen? Why did he do this? Then pick up a copy of this book because what we did is interview a lot of women, get their questions. I wrote out those questions and then I answered the questions. I've added tips to that as well. I've added dating tips to that too, because I want you to start getting ready if you're not prepared yet. I want to just start putting a seed in your mind, getting you ready to get out there into the dating world again. Um, this is not the book that is the vetting process. No More Assholes is the book that walks you through the vetting process. But this is the healing your book. This is, this is, you know, if you just want to stay home in your jammas and sip your tea or have a glass of wine and just put your heart back together, by all means, but do it with a copy of Comeback Queen because every time you read it, and I have readers, I have people who say, I've read this book four or five times. And, and they tell me that, you know, every time they read it, they gain some new perspective. We just had Ronnie pop into the room. Hello, Ronnie. Um, so this is definitely going to help you heal. That is certainly the feedback that I have heard. And this was really super fun because I actually went on Amazon today to go see if my books were still on sale, which they are, which is blowing my mind. Guys, I got some good deals going on. Make sure you grab your paperback copy because I have never seen them this low. Um, so I went on and I found this review on No More Assholes. So it says, I love Chantal Hyde. I was coming out of a terrible divorce and I realized I had no clue how to date. I Googled some books on dating after divorce, stumbled on The Comeback Queen. That was the first book I bought and I fell in love with her. I then bought No More Assholes and after the first kiss, I would recommend this book to anyone who keeps on ending up with the wrong guys. There's nothing quite like the confidence of a woman who can tell a man what she has to offer, what she's looking for, and have expectations of how she would like to be treated. Don't be afraid of putting it all on the table because the man who sees your worth will stick around 100%. So guys, I want to know, because we're getting near to the end of tonight's episode of the Chantal Hyde Show. So I want to know if you have any questions. Is there anything about what I talked about that left you in the dark? Are you, is, is there, do you have any questions? I love, love, love your questions. I love it when we get spontaneous. I love it when we talk about our experiences. Um, you know, and even if you don't have a question, if, if you came here with a question and I answer them all, just say in the comments, I'm good. Cause then I know, I know where you at. I know you're fine. I know I'm leaving you in a good place. So let me know what's happening with you. If I need to address anything more, you know, I'm always about making you happy, always about helping you feel satisfied. So I want to make sure if this has worked out for you, did you gain some, some information that helped you out? Would love to see that feedback. And then I also want to know, what do you guys want me to touch on next week? 
So drop me a comment. If there's something I haven't talked about yet, a topic that you'd love to see come up, uh, is, is there something you feel I should be addressing that I just haven't touched on yet? Would love to know if, if there's anything that I, sh I need to help you out with. And then from my shy people, from my, my wallflowers, my background people, uh, you know, oh, Caroline says, I really need to get this book. Something has to change, darling. Yes. You know, I'm all about the changes and I love evolution and evolution is something that I have experienced firsthand. Guys, when, when I came up with the title of No More Assholes, I did not pull that out of thin air. I pulled that out of experience, out of a moment where I stood in my kitchen and I literally had, you know, a come to Jesus moment. I had my arms up in the air. I'm alone in my apartment. And I just went, no more assholes. It came out of me like so strongly. It had to be said out loud, just having that no more moment. And that was the beginning of a shift. I was never, ever in a relationship with somebody who was wrong after that. I had a relationship afterwards that we outgrew each other. And now I am with somebody that I consider my soulmate. Um, you know, my first husband, I call him my greenhouse because it was just such a safe, wonderful place for me to grow and replant myself and redefine myself. But for those of you who really feel like they need that extra push, who really feel that they need somebody who's going to give them some direction. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I love doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. I, I do what I call putting out your fires. Listen, the more in distress you are in combination with willing to do the work that I give you, because let me tell you guys, every session that we do, I will give you homework based on how far you've come since our last session and what you need going forward. All of my coaching is custom tailored to the client. I have a bag full of, of techniques that I draw on, but I pull them out as you need them. The schedule is yours in terms of your advancement. The more you lean into the work that I give you, the faster you will evolve. I have people who go to therapy for years. They come to me and within months, they're experiencing change. I'm going to tell you within weeks, they're experiencing change. It is beautiful and I love it. My method works. It worked for me. It is working for so many people. Ah, joy guys, absolute joy. So here's what I want to do for you. I want to give you a super special offer. And this is pretty much the best one that I have given so far. Now there's, oh, that's not the right one. There we go. So <clears throat> now typically I do, you know, if you do a single session, it's 125 an hour. If you take a bulk package, then it's $500 for five hours. So you get a discount there, but I'm going to do a super duper discount, which is you get six sessions and these sessions will be timed to a maximum of an hour and a half. And you get six of these for $665. So if this is something that you're interested in, if you want that push, if you want somebody who's going to guide you outside of your box and walk you step by step through a process of getting into what it is that you want, click the get my offer button. It's going to take you to my contact me page because this offer that I'm giving you is not on my website. This is only through here. So if you click on the get me offer, you're going to go to my contact me page. I want you to send me an email and say, Chantal, I'd like to talk about your offer. I'm going to email you and we're going to set up an appointment just to have a conversation about how we can make this work. What it is that you need. Can I help you? And then <clears throat> I do payment plans. So if you need a payment plan, if you need help that way, let me know. Let's talk about that. Let's, let's get you to where it is you want to go because I love 
seeing your evolution. I feed off of your evolution. I have the ability to help you through this if you let me help you. But you know what? If coaching is not your thing, if you like to sit down and you just like to slowly go at your own pace, then so Indigo, by the way, um, so Chapters, Chapters Indigo has Comeback Queen on sale. And it's on sale at 32% off. So you're going to get it for $13.54 right now, which is super cheap for the paperback. Uh, so I do recommend you hit up Chapters Indigo and go take advantage of that. I think they still have it on sale. I checked Amazon and I did forget to check Indigo. So you might want to double check. Um, and then they also have After the First Kiss on sale. Oh my God. They have no more assholes. That is okay. Oh, well, anyways, go check out Indigo. They've got, they've got a fan. I think they still have a fantastic sale on. Um, Amazon definitely still does. So they also have Comeback Queen on sale. Um, they have Say Yes to Goodness on sale and they have Fix That Shit on sale. So if paperback is your thing, then go grab it. Now is the perfect time because the price is low. And then as always, you know how to find me. And if you don't, here is where I am. Instagram all day, every day, all the time. I am always on Instagram. So if you want to find me on Instagram, I'm always putting little nuggets of wisdom, some fun stuff, some fun memes. Uh, I do my little videos on Instagram. So usually about once a day or so, definitely several times a week, I'm creating stories that are video stories, either updating you on what's coming up or just giving you a little nugget of advice. Uh, and I'm always populating my feed with like information. So I'll put like a cute meme up and then, and then I'll really just kind of dive into a meaning of it with something that's going to teach you how to lift yourself up. And then my YouTube channel, uh, pretty much every week I'm putting videos up. So do subscribe to my YouTube channel. I put the replays up there too. So in case you miss a webinar, then you can go back to the YouTube channel and go catch it. Uh, there will be a point where I'm going to be putting the webinars under lock and key. So do take advantage of the webinars while they're free. Um, and of course, Facebook, I go on Facebook as well. I have a Speed Dating with Chantal Facebook group. So sign up for that. Even if you're not local, you will meet like-minded people on there because my fans are definitely people who want to evolve and grow. And then as usual, we have the Chantal High Show. So every Tuesday at 8 p.m., I'm doing a show for you, touching on a subject. And then once a month, it's all about the No More Assholes webinar. So tell your friends if they want to learn how to date in a whole new way, in a way that's, that's you know, turning dating upside down instead of kissing to see where it goes. So kissing somebody, committing to them. And ladies, you know, we, we commit with a kiss. So instead of committing to somebody you don't know and then hoping for the best, then what you are doing is getting to know somebody. And I, I, I teach you why this is important to hold back that kiss, getting to know somebody first and then kissing the right one. Because let me tell you, train wrecks will fall away when you follow this process. I want you to think about your last relationships. How many times when you think about your past, how many people would you not have kissed if you had given more time to get to know them? Super important. Um, am I missing anything? Oh, podcast. So of course, every week I have a podcast. Um, we talked about insecurity at the last one. Uh, so I talked about insecurity. I talked about why insecurity is normal, why it's natural, why I actually like my husband to feel a little bit insecure, but also when it becomes abusive, when it's a red flag, when you should not be using it as an excuse, not, you know, using it to vomit negative behaviors into your relationship. So you can, you can check me out on iTunes or whatever podcast player you like, because there's actually like a ton of podcast players that are picking up my channel and playing it on their channel. So really, if you just type in Chantal High Podcast, you will find me in so many places. Um, but if in doubt, 
then what you can do is just go to my website, go to the webinars link, and if you scroll down, you're gonna see the webinars, and you're gonna see my books, and then you see my podcast. I've actually loaded my podcast up onto my website as well, so you can go ahead and watch it and share it from there. Uh, so let me pop back into the chat. Uh, okay, so guys, this was super fun. I love, love, love talking to you tonight. This was a great topic. I hope you learned something. Hope you took some notes. I hope there's something that you're gonna do that's gonna be new going forward. I'd love to hear your feedback. Love to know how you felt about tonight's episode. Love to know if there's anything you feel I should be teaching going forward. And I will see you again next Tuesday, right here, live on the Chantal Hyde Show. I love you guys, and I'm gonna to talk to you soon.